an officer at 829 Stony Brook. Um, her friend just woke me up and swears that she found her severed head of her son in the basement. Okay, tell me what's happening there again. I have no clue what's happening. My girl swears that she's found her severed head of her son in the basement. Did you go down there? No, fuck it. I went down, I can't tell what the fuck it is. And who is, who, who, whose head is it? She's claiming it's her son. How old is her son? 24, 20, 25. Has he been missing or? No, he was here yesterday with some chick. You said you went down there, correct? Yeah, I went to the toll, but I can't, I, I can't see very well, and I can't know what the hell it is. So there's something in the bucket. There's right something in the got, there's something in the goddamn bucket. Do you think she's hallucinating, or do you think that? I don't think so. I went down. There's something in the damn bucket. Oh man, is she a little freak dog and kind of freaking you? The 911 call you just heard was made by Steve Hicks and his girlfriend Tara Pakanich of Green Bay, Wisconsin shortly after 3am on the morning of February 23rd, 2022. Tara had been awoken by the sound of her front door slamming shut and a car driving away from her house. She got up and noticed that the light in the basement was on. Tara went down but the basement was seemingly empty. Then. Tara noticed a bucket at the bottom of the stairs that appeared to be a little out of place. A beach towel had been placed over the bucket and when Tara bent down and pulled the towel back, she recoiled in horror. Inside the bucket was her son's severed head. Upon arriving at the scene, officers inspected the bucket for themselves. As can be seen from the body cam footage, the two officers are clearly stunned at what they find. A quick search of the basement would uncover some blood on and around a nearby mattress, as well as chunks of human flesh. Further inspection of the bucket would uncover a male sex organ and two blood-stained knives. A forensic examination of the basement would later turn up human organs that had been placed inside plastic bags and cardboard boxes. As if the scene wasn't morbid enough, investigators also found a foot inside a chest cavity. Shad Therion was Tara's 24-year-old son. He was a kind and thoughtful young man with a talent for computer gaming and wood carving, but he had his demons. Shad had been struggling with drug use for some time before his death. Given his affable nature, it wasn't immediately clear just who would want to harm Shad. Tara Pakanich informed officers that the last time she had seen her son alive was at around 9.30pm on February 21st, when his girlfriend, 24-year-old Taylor Shabusiness, picked him up in her minifan. Like Shad Therion, Taylor was a regular drug user. She had a son from her marriage to Warren Shabusiness, but due to their dubious lifestyle choices, the child had been taken into care not long after Taylor gave birth to him. Warren Shabusiness was in prison at the time of Shad Therion's murder for charges relating to the distribution of methamphetamines. His adulterous wife continued taking hard drugs while her husband was locked up. Taylor's childhood had been a tumultuous one. At the age of 11, her mother passed away. Her father remarried, but in 2018, he was found guilty of sexually assaulting a child and was subsequently sentenced to 12 years behind bars. Following the grisly discovery made in Tara Pakanich's basement, officers made their way to the apartment block where Taylor was living. They found her minifan parked outside and carried out a quick inspection of the vehicle. Hey. Um, is this blood? Does this look like blood to you? Or am I just tripping? 
bloody footprint. You see this right here? Possibly be blood. After possibly detecting the presence of blood on and around her minifan, Taylor's ship business herself suddenly appeared. Hi. Hi, Taylor, how's it going? Officer Russell with the Green Bay Police Department. Just make sure you ain't got nothing on you here. There you have one more here. Just put your hands back with. Anybody else here, Parker? You got blood on your hands here, blood on. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Negative, we got it up here. After being placed under arrest, detectives began interviewing Taylor. Detectives asked her if she knew somebody by the name of Shad Therion. According to Taylor, Shad was her ex-boyfriend. When informed that Shad's severed head had been found in his home, Taylor's reaction wasn't exactly one of shock and horror. Well, they found a kind of a disturbing stuff at the house there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of blood. Um, basically, Shad's head. The officers didn't even bother asking Taylor whether she was responsible. They simply asked her where the rest of Shad's body was. Well, they found part of Shad at his house, his mom's house. Found his head. Where's the rest of his body? It's there, inside his house. It is in the house? It's inside his house. More body parts were found inside the minifan, including a leg. At one point, Taylor expressed her dismay at forgetting to bring Shad's head with her when she left the property. The basement, out the ground room, and then, um, I know I forgot the head, I wanted the head. Did you bring it? Taylor explained how she had picked Shad up on the night of February 21st. They went to an apartment where they took an array of drugs, including cannabis, crystal meth, and a powerful antidepressant known as Trazodone. The couple then returned to Shad's house and made their way to his basement. According to Taylor, she and Shad began having sex in the basement, and she stated that in the past, the two had experimented with asphyxiation and on this occasion they decided to use metal chains. For reasons that remain unknown, Taylor proceeded to strangle Shad with the chains. Now that her lover was dead, Taylor spent several hours sexually assaulting his corpse. She then walked upstairs to the kitchen, retrieved several knives and began the dismembering process. Something was bugging the detectives though. Remember, Shad's murder occurred on the evening of February 21st. His severed head was discovered in the basement in the small hours of February 23rd after his mother, Tara, was awoken by the sound of the front door slamming and a vehicle driving away from her home. Presumably, the person who had walked out of the house and driven away was Taylor's ship business. This begged the question, had Taylor spent the entirety of February 22nd down in the basement while Tara and her boyfriend were upstairs? Taylor didn't give a straight answer when this was put to her, but it appears quite possible that on the date in question, Taylor spent the whole day dismembering Shad while Tara and Steve were upstairs. How long do you think you were in the basement? I really don't know. I was it during the day at all? Mm, I really don't know. Was it, did you sleep at all? I mean, I was playing with him all night, so. Because you were playing with him all night? Yeah. What all during the day? Taylor even said that at one point, 
Tara had come down to the basement with the family kit, but had not noticed Taylor's presence. If I were a gambling person, I'd put my house on it being the case that Taylor entered Chad's house on February 21st and never left until around 3am on the morning of February 23rd. I have covered numerous true crime cases over the course of the past year and just when I think that nothing can shock me anymore, I stumble across absolute nightmare fuel. Despite her candor with detectives, Taylor pleaded not guilty when her trial came around. According to her defence team, Taylor was insane and so not accountable for her actions when she choked to death Shad Therion and then mutilated his body. Perhaps Taylor's decision to randomly begin assaulting her attorney before the trial officially commenced was a ploy designed to reinforce the idea that she was insane. If that was the case, it didn't work. On July 27th, the jury delivered their verdict. Okay. First verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, Taylor Denise Shabiznis, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Dated this date, July 26th, 2023, signed by the foreperson. Second verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, Taylor Denise Shabiznis, guilty of mutilating a corpse as charged in count two of the information. Dated this date, July 26th, 2023, signed by the foreperson. The next verdict reads, We, the jury, find the defendant, Taylor Denise Shabiznis, guilty of third-degree sexual assault as charged in count three of the information. Dated this date, 26th day of July, 2023, signed by the foreperson. The verdicts appear to be in order. As the state of Wisconsin abolished the death penalty, all the way back in 1853, Taylor Shabiznis is facing a mandatory life sentence. Meanwhile, the loved ones of the young man she slaughtered without mercy are forced to try to move on with their own lives. <laughs>